Hi, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to be doing the build video of the FT Simple Storch. Now, if you haven't seen the episode on the FT Simple Storch, there's gonna be a link down below. I'd strongly recommend that you watch it. The FT Simple Storch is very special to us because it's our first community beta tested model. It's probably one of the most versatile airplanes with the widest speed envelope that we've ever had before in all of our designs. Uh, we got the opportunity to reveal this during Flight Fest 2014, pass the transmitter, and also send out some beta kits for the community to give us their feedback, input, and we applied a lot of it. So it's changed versions three or four times now since we originally started this project. So if you want to build the FT Simple Storch, there are some free build plans down below. Uh, simply go to flighttest.com, click on the icon in the front page that says free build plans, select the Simple Storch, you'll see the build article and also a list of materials. Or on top of that, you can actually buy the speed build kit. And that's how you guys support us to help us continue to make great content. And because this is a swappable, you're going to want to make sure that you have your power pod built. If you haven't built your power pod, there's going to be a link below that's going to guide you through that process. Also another link that will help you with all the electronics that you're going to need. Once again, this power plant takes the bigger motor, which we oftentimes call the beef package. Highly recommend the larger motor. We like the Supo 2217-7. There's also a electronics kit you can get from Altitude Hobbies for that that's very reasonable. Also Laser Toys has an electronics pack that's very useful as well too. So if you haven't already, get your parts in order. You will need for the minimum setup. This goes from beginner all the way to advanced, four servos and some servo extensions. Two 24 inch extensions for the wings and two 12 inch extensions for the fuselage. Now would be a good time also to center up your four servos. Go ahead and apply your linkage stopper, second hole from the outside on all four, but only put your servo arms on the ones that are going in the fuselage. We're going to do something special with the ones that go on the wings, so we're going to leave that off for now. One of the nicest things to start with and get out of your way first is your wing. Uh, once you get your wing done, it's something you can put aside. It's the biggest element on the airplane and oftentimes gives people the most intimidation. This one is very easy to build. The first thing we're going to start with the wing is by doing our spars. Now typically our spars are just folded in half, but because this wing is so big, we're using the same spar method as we are as we use in the FT Kraken. We're simply going to open this up and we're going to create a box spar with this. Now if you're scratch building this, we can go through the color codes again. Um, black is cut through, red is score, and blue indicates either a crease or just a reference mark. And what I'm doing here is I'm just slightly gliding my razor blade along just to make sure that we have a nice crisp line that goes all the way down to the paper. You don't want to cut through the paper. You simply want to just remove this here. We're going to do this on both of our spars and open up both of these channels. And as you can see here that this is a B fold. A good friend actually came up to me at, at Flight Fest and said, hey, why did you name it A and B? Um, I didn't realize this, but it actually works out beautifully. A good way to remember what an A fold and B fold is, is A is above the bottom plate and B is besides. So thank you so much for that advice. So the B fold, we're going to have this besides the bottom plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and work this because it's a fairly small piece of foam. I'm going to work this down in the groove and get it positioned ahead of time to make sure that we have this where we need it. Now that we're happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and take my hot glue. And speaking of hot glue, there's two different versions of hot glue coming out. One has a clear stick and one has a white stick like this. Peter, why don't you explain them what's going on with the white sticks? Well, one thing I've noticed, though, is um, working with hot glue for a while, a company called Surebonder also did the same thing AdTech has just done. They used to have these really kind of like clearish, like sort a little of opaque, bit milky. yeah, milky looking glue sticks. And these work great. I mean, you put it on there, it bonds, dries just a few seconds. Mm -hmm. But now they came up with this, some really, really milky, not so translucent stuff. And if you try to glue something yeah. with this, it's really tacky. You hold it down, you'll think it's dry because you've been working with this stuff. You let go and the piece falls off. So right now, I recommend buying all of the original stuff you can. You can still find it from AdTech in some places. And as we find better sources for mm -hmm. the hot glue, we'll definitely let them know. But you yep. said right now Harbor Freight has it. Uh, Harbor Freight has their own brand that seems to be working pretty good. Yep. I and use some of that. Obviously, hot glue is what holds our planes together, so we take it very seriously. Yeah, because this stuff melts in the sun, which is the bad yeah. part. If you see this, you can see this is clearly yep. more white than the other. Terrible. Good. Awesome. All right, so find all the awesome hot glue you can and load up on it. Yep, you better start hoarding it. <laughs> now back to our B-fold here. I'm gonna go ahead and put most of my glue, and once again, more glue does not mean a stronger adhesion. And I'm gonna focus right on that side plate here. I'm not gonna put it down on the paper in that cavity because then you gotta push it all up and out of there. I'm only gonna put it where it needs to actually meet the piece. Now I'm gonna fold this in and get as close to 90 degrees as possible. Don't worry about bending this paper here. It's not a big deal. What this is creating is a box spar, and a box spar is incredibly strong compared to the typical way we do our spars, which is just usually folding it in half. So just go over A fold and B fold again in case it's your first build. B is the side plates are besides the bottom plate, and A fold is the side plates above that. If you built your power pot already, you'll know what an A fold is. 
We're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Now that our box bar is created, we're going to go ahead and take this down and you can see here that there's a blue etch mark here. On the plans this will be blue. That's just simply to signify where we need to mark out the area. And we're going to go ahead and cut this uh, paint stick just to the edge of this. It doesn't have to be exact, but get as close as possible. And what I like to do with paint sticks is score one side and then score the other side. And if you do it right, it'll often crack nice and clean, just like that. Now that we have that, we will actually take the dirty end and we'll point that towards the outer part and then line this up just about flush with the edge as you see right there. And we're going to glue that in. One thing I really like doing is spreading that glue out. So when I drop this down, I'm going to move it around a little bit and then press down nice and hard and squeegee that glue out as much as possible. And if you're pulling close here, you're going to see that I got that paint stick right up to the edge of that foam board. We're going to repeat both these processes of the B-fold and the paint stick on the other spar. Now that we have our spars done, our next step is going to be to join the wings and get those ready to receive their spars and get the airfoil. Before we do, we're going to go ahead and lay this down next to each other and line these outer edges up perfectly. Now this is the outer skin of the wing here. So what we want to do is we want to tape these bottom and top here and then get this nice and secure and straight. First thing I'll do is take two little small pieces of tape just so it doesn't shift as we take the big one over. And put one on one tip. One on the leading edge and one on the trailing edge. Now what you can see is that this area here has a gap. That gap is supposed to be there. That's to give us our dihedral later on in the build process. Once we're happy with that and it's not moving, we can go over with our tape and lay it down. Now you can use extreme packing tape. You can use the box tape like what I'm using now. It does not matter. The important thing is, is that it's nice and flat and pushed down nice and solid. I'm actually going to go over this a couple more times after we get the wing built. But now we have a nice hinge that we can use and we can open this up. We're going to simply fill this gap in here with hot glue. I'm going to skip over where that center hole is. And then I'm also going to stop putting glue in this area here because we don't need that. I'm going to go all the way down here to the trailing edge and put a bead there as well. At this point I'm going to lay this nice and flat and hopefully a little bit of glue will be squirting out. Take a scrap piece of foam or your finger and smooth that out. What I like to do is actually take this over and fold it over here just to kind of keep it. Let this dry and don't disturb it until it's fully dry to the touch. Once this is dry I'm just going to firm it up with another layer of tape on this side here. We will need to cut some reliefs in with a razor later on. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to cut a relief in right here. Right here, right here, and then we're going to cut this guy out just so when we pop him out afterwards, that tape's not fighting us. This gives back all the strength that we had when this was a solid piece of foam. Alright, this time I'm going to go ahead and fold this open right on where the leading edge is. And if you wonder where the leading edge is, it's very simple. This is a three-fold wing, so right here and here is going to be the top horizontal part of your wing. This will be your leading edge. And on the plans, the creases where the score cuts are defined as red cuts. So you'll see these three red lines. The one line that we want to fold this on is this one right here. Once we have this folded, we're going to go ahead and cut a double bevel. This is most easily done by holding your razor blade at an angle that's not perpendicular to the leading edge, but at an angle. And that way, it rides nice and smooth. And we don't want to cut through the center paper. This can also be done with a sanding block. You don't need to use a razor blade, it just creates a little bit more dust. But if you're building this with a friend or a child who doesn't want to use a razor blade, a sanding block works just fine. I use 120 grit and I have it glued to a hard wooden block. We're going to go ahead and do the exact same process on the other side. I need to cut through the center paper, no worries. We just go back and reinforce it with a little bit of packing tape on the outer edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. Our next step in this process is to go ahead and take just the tip of your barbecue skewer that's either included in your kit or along with your materials list 
and don't go all the way to the paper just put a slight dimple right at the very top edge to kind of concave that paper just a little bit now a lot of the other designs that don't even do this step are recommended it because I don't want to weaken this up but what I really want here is for this wing to really find its shape without pushing against you because you have a big wing surface you got to push down on and if it's too tight and too restrictive it's going to pop back up like a springboard and give you a warped wing now we're going to come in with our spars the reason why we made these box bars and we also put this wood together is when we glue this together we're going to have a natural gap here and we're going to line this up perfectly right with our gap which is only about a 32nd to a 16th of an inch well, what that's going to do is when this wing folds together it's going to crush and these two guys are going to fight up against each other this is going to get, make your wing incredibly strong because the last thing we want is for this wing to fold and frankly without these popsicle sticks in eventually it would so make sure you have plenty of glue in your glue gun at this point and what we're going to do is we're going to put glue all the way down our spars i like going in a zigzag motion you can do whatever you want and then with your paint stick facing forward we're going to go right in between these two crease lines and i'm going to just rotate this back and forth a little bit and spread that glue out and line it up just with the paper once again about a sixteenth of an inch is all you need on that gap right on the edge if you built an FT3D before, you'll know how much lining up with these creases matters when you're putting these spars in to get a nice, straight, and true wing. Once this is down, we're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Now, we made sure and we gave our spars ample time to dry. At this point, we're going to go ahead and glue our back spacers in. And once again, if you're familiar with building any of our designs, this is going to be very comfortable for you. But on the plans, it's a blue line on the trailing edge right here. On the laser cut kit, it's just an inch line. But we're going to go ahead. And this portion here is found on the speedbill kit in with your fuselage plank. And all it acts as is a spacer to give your wing the right shape so your ailerons don't act as flaps when you don't want them to. And we'll repeat the same process on the other half. This is the largest wing span swappable we have now to date. And it's very important that the wings are as strong as possible. Because the speed envelope, you can fly this actually fairly fast and do some very exciting aggressive maneuvers with it but you got to make sure you have a strong wing. We now have our trailing edge spacer, our box bar, and our bevel cut. We're not going to worry about the ailerons until after we get our, fully, our wing fully glued down. Reason being is I want to use the surface area to be able to press on nice and evenly. If this was actually cut as a hinge already and you push down too hard in the wrong spot, you could delaminate that. We don't want that. Make sure your wing takes its shape without too much force. Once you're happy with that, make sure you have an extra glue stick handy. Your hot glue gun is nice and hot, and a lot of people ask about what hot glue gun we use. This is an AdTech two temperature hot glue gun, 40 watt with the big sticks. Here's a quick tip Peter taught me. Touch the tip of the nozzle to your hot glue stick, and then put it in the back, and it'll glue itself to the hot glue stick ahead of itself. At this point, we're going to go ahead and go right down the leading edge. And then right in the crease of the spar here, where we open it up a little bit. You can see why we wanted that extra hot glue stick. And now we're going to go on both sides of the spars. A hot glue gun that could handle this much hot glue coming out is very important. You don't want to use a small stick hot glue gun unless it's incredibly hot and you have very long sticks. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and fold this over, and I'm going to press it down, and I'm not going to hurry this process, I'm going to lay this out, kind of awkward. Matter of fact, Peter, this is too awkward, can you help me out? Yeah, sure. Another thing you can do right now is if you had a 2x4 about 4 feet long, you can lay that 2x4 over. There you go, Peter. Just push right over that box Perfect. part. You can lay a 2x4 right over this area here and actually press down. Just make sure it's long enough to go over this box bar. And that technique works on all of our bigger wing designs uh, very well. And it's kind of like an extra set of hands. You can push in the middle and it pushes evenly on the whole entire area. But it's always good to have a friend. <laughs> At least keeps from buckling these with your elbows. Yeah, you don't want that. Mm -hmm. And make sure you put most of your force right on top of the spar area. Now you have two effective pieces of foam here. And also that popsicle stick. So when this actually turns up, those two... I yeah, should, they just butt up against each other. So they it butt keeps, up. From, keeps them from uh, squishing all the foam. You got it. It takes that force. Keep calling them popsicle sticks. They're paint sticks. 
give this a good minute and a half. Let this dry thoroughly. You don't want this back edge lifting up on you because if it does, it changes your whole entire airfoil. Yeah, I've had experience doing that. I tried to glue it all in one shot once. It becomes pretty much of a headache, huh? Pretty awful. It still flies. It just looks really funny. <laughs> you get a lot more um, camber in the airfoil. You do. You do. It gets sharp on the back because it creeps mm. up on you. All right. Now, there's a reason why we glued this. It's because it's sealed. At this point, we can actually open this area up here and kind of look at the area we did. Now, you want a nice tight glue joint down, but say it's like this here and it's not still quite how you want it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue down in this area here. Just make sure it's nice and solid before I move on. Just hold that down a little bit longer. Now these wings are also incredibly easy to put LED lights in because you can simply wrap it around the spar, take your final lead and drop it down through here. And the nice thing about putting lights inside of your plane is it lights up the whole entire wing like a lantern. So at this point, the spar is down nice and solid. I'm very happy with that. We're gonna put a bead of glue on this very back edge here. Uh, reason being is I want to get this very rigid because the glue will hold that together and give it a lot more strength. Also keep it from delaminating in the future. And with these planes lasting longer and longer, I don't want it to fall apart on you. So we're going to put a bead of glue here and also a bead of glue on the trail edge spacer right here. And then we're going to simply press it down and hold it. Once again, if you have a friend to help you with it, that's a good thing. The other thing you can do, flip it over and push on this edge right here. Let's go ahead and do that now. This doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a simple bead of glue right on this back edge. You can see I'm even falling off a little bit. It's a sign of having too much caffeine in me. All the way to the edge. Now we're going to go back. And you can see I'm favoring the spacer edge closer to the trail edge of the wing. At this point, I'm just going to fold it over like this and press it down. We're going to go ahead and remove this little uh, dihedral gauge here, and it's on the fuselage plank of your kit. This is going to be used as our dihedral gauge for when we do our wing, and we're going to do that process right now. Uh, but before we do that, i got to take a razor blade and open up this area where the tape was. And I only need to go about two inches from the trailing edge, about five centimeters, and then right to the to leading edge here. And what that's going to do is give me the ability to put hot glue in there. And the hot glue is basically going to be what's going to hold this shape, so you're not going to want to rush this process. But what I like to do is actually just actually open up just a little bit on the table here. Don't go bend it down because you're going to stress out this area, which is right now very, very strong. And we're going to take our hot glue gun, put our nozzle right over that cavity. And if you built the simple sore, this is the exact same process we did on that. And I'm simply going to inject hot glue all the way down to where we stop the cut. At this point, I'm going to lift up on this edge, and I'll put our dihedral gauge right here. And if you wish, you can take a scrap piece of foam, or lick your finger, smear this, and spread it out. We're going to go ahead and just go back and reforce it with some packing tape, or some extreme packing tape, whatever you prefer. So the final step here with our wing joining here is we're going to go ahead and put a popsicle stick on the very back trailing edge. That way when we rubber band the wing onto the fuselage, it doesn't destroy the trailing edge on it. Just going to center that up nicely. At this point we're going to go ahead and put our servos in, but before we do that we need to cut open the little hatch on the bottom here. So I'm just simply going to trace this out. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of surface area here, but you can actually drop this down through, right through here. Or if you want, Another easy method is, is that you can actually just take a little piece of thin wire, snake it through here, and then make sure you take your open end. If there's debate on whether it's a female or male, it's actually technically a male. We're going to snag this and pull it on through. You can use gravity as your friend. It works the same, just a little bit more shaking involved. And so it pops it up just like that. Now we're going to take the servo without the servo arm and make this connection. And if we want to make sure it doesn't ever come unplugged, we'll put a little piece of tape on it. At 
There's three different configurations that you can have this wing hooked up as. It can be aileron only, flap arounds, or ailerons and flaps separately. Now for beginners, I strongly recommend just going with the simple ailerons, and the ailerons in the smallest form, not as the full span ailerons. If you do that, that's fine, but you do have some adverse yaw that will be happening because of the, uh, because of the actual uh, deflection on there. But we can show you a way with your servo that you don't even need computer programming to overcome that. But before we do, we're going to go ahead and take our servo and we're going to glue it right in the middle of this area right here where just the head pops out about a quarter of an inch. Remove these stickers and I'm going to scratch the body with either some sandpaper or a razor blade. That'll give the glue something to hold on to. This plastic is very, very fatty. Put a drop of glue on both sides and I'm going to slide it in. Now we're going to repeat this exact same process on the other side and then we're going to go back and choose which kind of aileron configuration we're going to want. So our servos are in. We're actually going to go ahead a step here and we're going to finish off our wing right now. That which means we're going to put our linkages in and also our control horns and everything else. Uh, but before we do it, this wing can be configured three different ways. Uh, if you've never flown a 4 channel before, this is a trainer for you. I strongly recommend that you're going to cut on this line right here. What this is going to give you is your ailerons in this area here only. Uh, if you're a little bit more advanced, a little bit more comfortable flying a uh, four channel, go ahead and go for the flapper on option. That's the one I'm going to show you right now. And many people also like the original format, which is separate flaps and separate ailerons. Also through advanced mixing, you can get crazy things like crow. Um, but I strongly recommend for beginners, start with the ailerons. We're going to show you the flapper ons right now. And to do the flapper ons, we're simply going to go ahead and complete the full cut right here closest to the base. Now, if you do flap runs, you do need a computerized radio that can do your mixing. You will not need a Y harness. A Y harness is only needed if you're doing ailerons only. We're also going to have a video in the future here showing you how to put decals on this plane, how to paint it, and also the flap option and differential mixing, a lot of other advanced features you can do with this airplane. But now that I have this cut, I'm simply going to go ahead and crack this, fold it back 180 degrees, and put a single bevel cut on the aileron. Now keep in mind, because this is going to have flap runs, you're going to need a little bit more of an extreme throw going down than normal. So I'm going to go ahead and just go over a little bit more. We're going to repeat this same process on the other side. Now, if you want to get the longevity out of your wing, we're going to go ahead and put a bead of hot glue right down the center hinge line of this aileron. I should say now it's a flapper on. And we're going to take a piece of scrap foam and we're going to scrape off as much excess as we can. This is going to allow the hot glue to reinforce and penetrate in where the paper is. And keep that paper from delaminating over many flights. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and install our control horns here. And I'm just going to use the back end of this control horn to open up this cavity here. Put a little bit of hot glue in there. I'm going to press it through. And then I'm going to go on the back side and I'm going to wipe off that excess. And I'll let it dry. Make sure these are good and strong. Repeat the same process on the other side. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and take our push rods included in the kits. Now, you can see this is much longer than what you need. Keep this extra because if you ever want to go back and make individual flaps and ailerons, this extra hot wire will be what you need. We're going to go ahead and put this on the very top hole. Now, typically, the rule of thumb is always have the servo perpendicular to your lower surface, so it's 90 degrees just like this right here. We're not going to do that in this case because we want to actually have pre-dialed in differential. Now what differential is, is when one aileron goes up and the other one goes down, the aileron dropping has more drag. So even though this one's banking this way, it's pulling back because the lower aileron grips the air better than the upper aileron. We don't want that because what you have to do is aggressively feed and roll a uh, rudder to give you a coordinated turn. To overcome this, we're going to use the position of the servo arm to our advantage. We want the upward deflection of the aileron to be further than the downward deflection. The way we can do this is by moving our aileron servo forward a tooth or so to about 15 degrees if I'm not mistaken. Reason being is because the mechanical advantage as it goes closer and closer to the center line gets less and less. But as it's pushing, you can see it has a much greater distance to travel that arc and push up much higher. So we're going to move both of the aileron servos forward about, uh, about 10 to 15 degrees here to take care of this differential. That way you can buy or fly this on as cheap as a $27 uh, transmitter from uh, Hobby King without having to program anything at all and getting all the benefits. I'm going to go ahead and cut this about a half inch on and we'll screw it down with the linkage stopper.
All right, I'm gonna hold this flat so the surface of this table is keeping this aileron right where I want it to be. And I'll tighten this down here. I'll show you how this deflection with the differential works for you. When the aileron moves and this goes down, it still has pretty good deflection down. You still have plenty of room for your flaps, but the important thing is when this goes up, look how much more deflection you can have. Now you can adjust this any way you want by how many teeth you go out. I only go out about one to two teeth at the very, very most. But what you're going to have the benefit of is when you have your flaps and your flap rounds are fully drooped and you go ahead and give aileron response, this is going to kick up a lot quicker, which normally when you have flap rounds, your ailerons become less effective, which will help you in flight considerably. I'm going to go ahead and lock it down here. Our wing is now officially done with servos, control linkages, everything. Now, if you want to use this as ailerons only, which gives you a little bit more throw for some, maybe some 3D maneuvers and more aggressive flying, you're going to need a Y harness here. Simply go into your aileron channel. Or if you're using flap rounds, these will go into two independent channels, which means you'll have sub trim capabilities over each one when you dial in your flaps. All right, we're going to go ahead and pop out our pieces here for the fuselage. Now, this fuselage is the first two piece fuselage that we've done. And that's because the moments and the lengths are similar to the real actual Feisler storch. All right, as you can see, there's a lot of pieces to the fuselage, but they're all relatively easy to cut, so don't be intimidated about this process. Uh, but before we start, one of the easiest things to get this done the quickest is simply by removing the foam to make our cavities all along here. The only areas we're not going to remove foam from is we're not going to finish off the cuts for the rudder and the elevators. We're going to leave those alone. We can even leave the servos alone. It gives us a little bit of ability when we're pressing this down into our B-folds to give us nice crisp edges. Uh, but go ahead and remove the foam from the outer edges. You can also go ahead and cut your 45 degree bevels on your rudder and your elevator. Now this cavity is a little bit wider than the most, but it needs to come out just the same. This is going to be the area where your barbecue skewers poke through. Just give you a little bit of a guide. It'll fold around like this. We'll do that in just a second. Now because this area here is made of foam, we are going to go back and reinforce it with a popsicle stick. But what I like to do is actually cut my bevel where normally I do cure on the elevator side. I cut my bevel on the stabilizer side because there's more meat here. It's going to be reinforced and because this face is down, you're never going to see it. It just makes this area a little bit stronger. I'll do the same process on the rudder, except this time I'm going to put the bevel right on the rudder itself. So we have our relief areas done, and there may be a couple things you haven't seen before. As you can see, these outer edges here, the relief is cut. That's just to give it a finished look on the very bottom here. And this back portion here is going to be what seams together with the rear part of our fuselage, just for some extra strength. And also, one thing we learned during beta testing is after multiple flights, this area of support in the pod would actually start wearing down on where this actual canopy piece was. So rather than putting the notches in here, common to a lot of our other airplanes like the Mustang, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and make this rest on this area here so it's beefed up even stronger so as a downward force goes this area doesn't start coming delaminated. So our elevator on our rudder we're going to put aside. We have all these ready to go on the fuselage. We're going to go right into our main body here. Now before we go ahead and fold this up we're going to take another one of our paint sticks here and we're going to reinforce this area right here. This is going to be where the top of our landing gear comes. Now this is quite a uh, involved landing gear. It's not hard at all to make, but there is a specific order you want to follow. And we don't want this landing gear being weak. We want it to be able to handle a lot of hits. This also gives the popsicle stick something to rest up against for your wing mounts. We're simply going to put a bead of glue here on both sides of that slot. Don't worry about putting it in the slot. We want the wire of the landing gear to go in that area. And while we're doing some reinforcing, we might as well move over here to the bottom plate of our fuselage. And you can see I put some etch lines here. They'll be blue on your plans. We're going to go ahead and cut this. And if anything, go just a touch on the small side. You don't want it to be big and bind up and cause your fuselage to go crooked. 90 degree bends are one of the biggest important things about this fuselage to get it right. If it's crooked, it's only going to look bad. It's not going to fly bad. Just put a bead of glue on both sides of that groove. If a little bit gets in, it's not a big deal. You just don't want to fill that cavity up with glue or we defeat the purpose of cutting the slot. Same process on the front here. This will be the reinforcement area for your landing gear on the bottom. Alright, now we're going to put our attention back to here. 
Now in your speedboat kit, and for that matter in your plants, we just drew a little triangle here, and this is going to be able to give you 90 degrees. It's very important that you fold these 90 degrees if they're not acute or obtuse. You want a nice, crisp 90 degree angle. Now because this is a B-fold, once again, the side cheeks are going to be sides the bottom plate, not on top. And I'm going to focus most of my glue where the side's going to meet it, not on the paper. Simply fold this up. Hold it 90 degrees. Use the table as your friend. And push that down in there. Make sure it's nice and crisp. Nice hard edge. If it's raised up a little bit on one side, you're going to start a twist that you don't want to have in your fuselage. I'm going to go back and put a little bit of reinforcement with some hot glue. And because of that heat, we're going to go back right to our 90 degree angle and make sure it stays at 90 degrees. And we're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side now. One reason why I always encourage people to really make sure that these cavities are empty of all scrap foam inside here is because when you fold this up, if you have any little pieces of foam in there, it's going to cause it to raise up and fight you on getting a nice crisp edge. So the better you clean this area, you can use a uh, paint stick, you can run it back and forth, um, you can scrape it out with your fingernail. It's just very important that you get these as clean as possible. It doesn't have to start out and come out in one clean piece, it just has to end up that way. This is nice and dry. We're going to put this aside and we're going to do the exact same process on the back of the fuselage here. We don't want to join these together because there's actually an angle difference on the wing. Uh, but you'll see that we left this area in here. We're not going to cut these out until right before we mount our tail in there. So once again we have a B-fold. Table is our friend. Glue on the side of the bottom cheek. Coming back to our little foam 90 degree angle to get the perfect. Once the one edge is dry, we'll repeat the exact same process on the other side. I'm pushing down as I push this in just to get it right up against that table there. If you see either the back edges or the front edges not being in parallel with each other, you know you have a problem. And once these two pieces are thoroughly dry, now comes the fun part. What we're going to do is we're going to actually slide this in and make sure that all the foam is out of this cavity area right through this area here. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide this guy in, just like so, and we're going to push down against that paper so it lines up perfectly. Now you don't have to put a lot of energy about getting this paper uh, saturated with hot glue. It'll kind of bump out and give you a little bit of bump. A little bit's going to go there. But what you also don't want to do is try to lay this flat on a table, put this together, and then push down. Because as you can see, when you do that, it separates it. There's an actual angle change for the wing, just like the original Storch that actually lets the tail elevate up a little bit as it's flying through the air. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold this area on the back here. We're going to take our fuselage, we're going to press it in, and then rotate it up. And then hold it there until it dries. Practice this a couple times over to make sure you got a good grasp on what you need to do here. I'm going to focus most of my glue not on the paper, but on the foam itself. At this point, I'm going to hit the bottom first, and then I'm going to rotate the sides up to it. And I can use both my hands to kind of make sure everything's tied up against itself. And we're going to hold that there until it's dry. At this point, you can see that all we have is this little bit, bit of paper here. The easiest thing to do for that is we can either tape it down, we can run a little bit of CA in there, but make sure you don't put so much it eats away the foam. Or we can actually just open this up and put our nozzle right underneath this foam board and put a really thin bead right along here. And then quickly go back and then squeegee it flat. You can repeat this process on all three sides. So now with all these joints glued the way they are, it's very, very strong. If you want to make it even stronger, you can go back with some packaging tape when we're done and then put a seam right over top of it. At this point, you're just making it very, very strong. It's not going to fall apart in your mid-flight. We've never had a failure in this area. It's a good idea if your razor blade starts getting dull, don't keep using it. Go ahead and put it aside and get another one here. At this point, we're ready for the bottom plate. Now, always keep in mind, you want this to always be going back and checking to make sure everything is 90 degrees. If you go through a process, you can kind of straighten it out if you catch it early enough. But once this piece is on here, everything is going to be locked in very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bead of glue on both sides here. But before we do, let's go ahead and test fit it.
and that fits very nicely. We're going to have a slight bow here that we're going to have to watch out for. And just put pressure here and on the back edge. It's always a good idea to practice where you're going to put things and the motions you're going to use before you put the glue on and get it down so it's a habit. Okay, feel good about that? We got plenty of glue on our hot glue gun. And I'm going to keep away from this area here because I'm going to be cutting that out. So I'm going to focus most of it on the paper. Now I'm going to roll it in and share the glue between the paper and the foam. I'm going to repeat this on the other side as well. Starting about a quarter inch in. Sharing between the paper and the foam. It's really hot, so be careful. And at this very end, put more on the paper, less on the foam. And I like to kind of slide things in place, so I'm going to start back a little bit. I'm going to slide this down in. Get it just to where that back paper touches the back edge. And curl it around. And then pinch the two sides together with my fingers. At this point, I can use my other hand and kind of keep working it down, making sure that everything is pushed up against itself and that we're happy with the fit. And at this point, before we put the elevator on, now would be a really good time to install our servos. So we're going to go back and do the exact same similar things that we did on the wing. Just this time, all we need is just a little 12 inch extension. Now I'm still going to tape these because you never want them coming loose in flight or when you're wiring this together. These two areas on the rear side of the fuselage, here and here, can get knocked out. And we can go ahead and snake these through very easily. Now, as you can see, the elevator servo is facing up and the rudder servo has its control arm facing down. At this point, all we need to do is just back them off a little bit, put a little drop underneath each flange and then press them down. It doesn't take much to hold these in. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our tail here, and the tail actually notches into the stabilizer. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our cavities here, and we're gonna assemble this. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna simply open this area up, and with the hinge, open that part of the hinge facing down, we're gonna slide this in, and let it hit our tabs right here. Once we're happy with the fit, we're gonna go ahead and glue it, and the way I like to glue it, I'm just going to put a bead of glue here, a bead of glue here, even just a little bit on the inside here and here. Just be careful it doesn't get too much or it'll drop through the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and slide this up, just like so. Move it back and forth. Now we can go back to our little right hand triangle and hold it there until it dries. We'll be able to make you know, future adjustments to make everything uh, straight and true with the brace going from the stabilizer to the rudder. Once we're happy with the top, I'm just simply gonna put a bead of glue and just glue in this keel here. And at this point, with everything glued down, it's easier to go ahead and put our control horns in now than having to move around the whole fuselage and get it dented up. So we're gonna follow the same process as we did before. Open up this cavity here, a little bit of hot glue. Now maybe a little bit harder to open up that cavity if you're scratch building because the laser actually undercuts just a little bit, which gives a nice little keyhole effect, which makes a very strong joint. So if you're going to do that and it's a scratch build, lay it on a flat piece of board and then push down on it. That way you don't crease your foam. And of course, the holes for the control horn go over the center line. And while we have this on its back, let's go ahead and pinch this area here. Close nice and tight. Just so it's less difficult to guide it through the slots. And we can put this down at this moment. Speaking of the slots, we want to go ahead and finish off the cuts here. I just like to go down just slightly, kind of get the pattern going. Don't need to use a straight edge. It's all going to push up against the rudder at the end. And now for the very bottom keel. And we're also going to cut out this area right here. At this point, we're going to test fit our tail into our fuselage. Just take your time, get everything lined up right. Once you get the top, move to the bottom, and everything should slide through nice. And I'm putting most of my pinch now on the actual rudder, driving that forward. And then this should fit down in and lock the whole thing down very nicely. At this point, we want to take our 90 degree right angle 
and make sure it's 90 degrees to the fuselage. Don't always trust this though. Make sure you give it a good visual and make sure it looks nice and straight as well. At this point, you don't need to remove the tail from the fuselage. All you need to simply do is take your hot glue gun with plenty of hot glue, put the tip up in there, and just drive a nice bead of glue in there on all of your seams. And I like to follow back with a scrap piece of foam and force the rest of the glue in, scrape off what you don't need. Extra glue is nothing but extra weight. We're going to go to the bottom and we're going to do the same process. Nice thing about these kits, in the scratch building there's always extra pieces of foam board to scrape off the extra. And since we're so far along, we might as well go ahead and put our push rods in here. I'm going to go to the furthest hole from the hinge line, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it about a half of an inch past. Make sure there's no one behind you. These linkage stoppers are very, very handy to have, especially if you truly use this as a swappable and you're going to hop your pod from one airplane to the next. It's best to have the plane trimmed up and adjusted through your linkage stoppers so all your trims are neutral. And all you need to simply do is make your connections in your receiver and go fly and have fun. If you have to custom trim every plane that when you sw swap out your pod, then all you're doing is mating your plane every time you switch things out. Now, since this has counterbalances on it, I can simply hold these counterbalances level. Our servo is nice and centered. And we're going to tighten it down. We're going to repeat the exact same process holding the counterbalance on the rudder and go to the outermost control horn. All right, our push rods are in, our linkage stoppers are locked down. I'm gonna go ahead and take off all the uh, wear and tear on this tail by reinforcing it with a skewer. The easiest way to cut skewer is to just put your razor blade down, spin it a couple times, and it cracks really cleanly. A little bit of glue on this foam, and then press it in and let it dry. Now the Storch had lots of braces and guide wires and, and, and reinforcement. We're going to do the similar things with this, uh, but especially around this tail because this tail is so large, it's really good to make this stronger. The way we're going to do this is we're going to take these two reference holes here. We're going to simply pass this through. And once I get this through roughly where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and just simply twist this down towards the rudder. Once I have it towards the rudder, I'm going to go ahead and twist this up and only go through the paper and about half of the foam. We're going to save the other half of the foam for the other side. Now this is where you got to eyeball it make sure nothing's been bent. But if your tail's crooked or your fuselage is crooked, you can set your wings on and make sure everything's true. You can actually turn this part and then glue it and hold it and make that correction now. This is good to go. It's nice and true. So I'm just going to lock it in where it is. And to do that, all I need to do is just put the tip of my hot glue gun right at where this meets and just squirt a little bit of glue both these holes. It's incredibly strong. Once this is dry I'm going to come back with these cutters and simply cut it as flush to the bottom as possible. And at that point I can follow up with a little bead of glue there too. I'm going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Easiest way to use that foam right angle and get around the edge of the uh, fuselage is simply just put a chamfer right in the right angle and that way you can press it hard up against both the tail and the elevator and you're good to go. At this point, we're ready to finish off the nose of the storch. Uh, before we do, we're going to want to go ahead and do what I like to call a C-fold, because it's after B. And we're simply going to fold this around, and this is going to be the area for our, uh, for our skewers. So we're going to just put a healthy amount of glue, not in the holes. And on the kit, this is just a 50% score cut. It causes a little bit of undercut. It helps guide your uh, skewers very nice and true through that. That's a trick you can also use that we'll put on the plants. While we're at it, we're just going to put a little bit of a drop in this NACA duct back here. Let it push into that 50% score cut, and then bend this down and hold it till it dries. At this point, we're going to go ahead and test fit the front of our nose into our fuselage. And this is a little bit different than what we've done before. We're going to go ahead and slide this up and in, and then let it notch down in here. And just make sure that you're happy with the fit. If you have any excess foam, that's causing it not to fit well, go ahead and remove it now. But that feels really good. Now we're going to repeat the exact same process, but with the glue involved. And before we put the glue down, I'm going to want to go ahead and put some glue right down in this channel here, just to give us a little bit of rigidity. Let's put a little glue on the top. I'm going to follow up with a bead of glue, once again sharing between the foam and the paper on both sides of the fuselage. 
The idea is when you push this down in, that both the glue will squeeze over the paper and the foam at the same time. Got about 30 seconds to work this and make sure it's all where you need. So you don't have to panic, but you do have to be deliberate. The tighter you can get this joint, the stronger everything is going to be and the better it's going to look. All right, now this plane is incredibly sealed, but before we go much further, what I'd like to do is actually reinforce this area too. And you may have seen this back on the nutball and on the Kraken. I'm gonna go ahead and take my triangle since I'm pretty much done with that. I'm gonna cut a gap just a touch smaller than the thickness of the foam and make a little notch right in here. My goal is to make that little notch so I can travel along the space and scrape out extra glue. So now when I go back with my hot glue gun, And put a bead of glue down in here. You can follow up to squeegee out all that extra glue and seal off that front edge. Just go nice and slow, just like that. So now, when that glue dries, this paper will never delaminate. I'm going to repeat this process on the other side and anywhere else that I want it. If I want to put it back on the rudder, I can do so as well too. It makes it incredibly waterproof and also very durable. At this point, we're going to go ahead and test fit our power pod and make sure that our holes line up that are pre-cut. And they are. So we can simply cut about three centimeter long dowels, a little over an inch. And with a little drop of glue, we're going to put them in. Just need to leave them hang out about a centimeter to a half an inch. Now this next step, we're just going to simply open up this top area, exposing the inner area where all of our wires, all of our connections can be made. This is going to be a typical rubber band style wing, so we can rubber band it off, we can remove it for transportation. It's not going to be glued in, which is going to be nice to give us access to all these wires in this area here. Before we go much further, we got a lot of requests to make some form of a reinforcement plate for the pod and also the fuselage. When people nose in or they have a hard crash or cartwheels, they found that their dowels were starting to rip the foam. And after repeated use and stuff, it got too sloppy. So what we did is we did something real simple. We just simply took some 132nd inch plywood, cut some discs out, and got an inch of tubing here. And we're gonna put that on the store as an element, but it's very simple for you to do at home. All you need to do is cut little tiny circles out of the very thinnest plywood you can find. 32nd feels like a thick piece of poster board uh, compared to wood but it's very, very durable, and that surface area is going to keep it from uh, failing. And all the fuel tubing's for is to cut little tiny keepers that you can put on the end of your barbecue skewers so you don't have a moment like Chad Capper had when he was flying the uh, Spitfire and it came out of the front end. Before we go much further, I'm going to go ahead and pop these little discs out. I'm going to take my barbecue skewer, and I'm going to go ahead and run this through and get it where I need it. And now you can see that this slides through nice and loose. All I'm going to do is put a thin bead of glue around here. This is something you can also do on the very early stages of building if you wish to. And to finish that off, just to make the pod glide around it easily, I'm going to take a piece of packaging tape and then go right over the whole entire unit, which will make it even stronger. I want to thank you guys for asking us to make certain components to make life easier with building and also make these more durable. We want these to last a very long time before you get many, many flights out of it. There you go. We're going to do the exact same process on the other side, and also the exact same process on the inside of our power pods. We like to keep it on the inside of the power pods so we don't have that excess thickness causing too much of a bind. And also on things like the FT flyer that use the actually cup down on the inside of the power pod, you don't have to worry because it's so thin you'll never feel it. Using these reinforcement discs on your airframe and on your power pod is going to give a lot more longevity to your power pod and your airframe. And it's really good when you're done going through the learning phase and you're actually building these to keep them around for a while. The nice thing about this is it will give a little bit of friction when you slide your pod in. And as you can see, when you pass this through, it makes it significantly stronger when it comes to forwards and backwards motion. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and install our power pod and make all of our connections here for the fuselage itself. So we go ahead and we went ahead and put our... Uh, our elevator and rudder 
right into the right channels. Make sure they're centered up and fluctuating properly. We'll go ahead and check our throws at the very end here. Uh, one other thing I'd recommend too is a lot of people use these little lemon receivers. Um, they're all good, but the little areas here, uh, right where the solder goes, they get weak. So I strongly recommend if you're using any type of these uh, receivers with little pigtails, put a little drop of glue for some reinforcement there. So when they go inside your power pod, they don't get stressed out from, from bending a lot. So we're going to go lock this in. And now for the one part that everyone dreads, the landing gear. It may look bad, but it's not bad. It's actually four pieces of wire. And we're going to show you measurement by measurement how we do this one step at a time. All you need to do is follow this exactly. You're going to be in great shape. The landing gear may seem difficult because it's four wires, but it truly isn't. You just got to go along with the exact pattern that I'm going to show you here. Uh, and also follow measurements as closely as possible. But at the end of the day, mirroring both sides is going to be the key. For this, we're going to go at seven and a quarter inches exactly. I'm just going to put my, my finger right here. Now I'm going to use two tools here. I'm going to use these channel locks and I'm going to go ahead and use these heavy duty pliers. The channel locks will come into play in just a moment. I'm going to ride this right up against my nail and I'm going to go ahead and put the sharpest bend I can using the channel locks. Now you can see this is kind of big and round. Now I'm going to take my channel locks here and I'm actually going to use that to take it a little bit sharper than the angle I actually need. Reason being is I want to get this angle here as tight as possible. Now with the shorter length going right at the zero point of the measuring tape uh, stick, I'm going to go ahead and start stretching this out. Now don't just bend it here, but bend it so this stays nice and straight, but we're actually opening up this angle. That's why I wanted to get it sharp, was to give a nice tight angle right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this up until it hits the four inch mark, just little by little. You can see I went over just a little bit, no big deal, we'll just crush it down just a touch. You don't want to go back and forth too many times before you weaken it. There we go. Go ahead and repeat this process uh, the exact same on another piece. Now, if this is just a little bit off, go ahead and mirror this piece. You don't have to listen to this anymore. And for you guys in the metric system, the two measurements I used, see we have seven and a quarter. That would equate to almost like 18 and a half centimeters. And then four inches will equate to 10 centimeters. Now we're gonna go ahead and match the other side. And there we are. Now our next step is to go ahead and measure out the same width of this fuselage here and measure just about to the other end of this fuselage. We're just going to go in just to the inside of this foam right here. And for measurement wise, that's about two and an eighth inches or five and a half centimeters. And all we're simply going to do is we're going to bend an angle that's about 45 degrees. This is going to get adjusted a little bit once we get our main landing gear on there. And we're going to do this two times over. At this point, we can put away the roller. We're going to be working with the fuselage from now on. Now, with the fuselage upside down, these two areas that we reinforced in the past are going to come into play. These are going to be our reference lines here. And on the original Storch, and on this model as well too, we actually want this landing gear to go slightly forward. And as you can see, that's why this angle is what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this right about to the middle. We're going to bend it down to about a 45 degree angle. Our goal is to get this span out as wide as possible. It's going to make it very stable for takeoff, but it also is very typical to what the storage was. Like that. Now we're going to go the same distance in. It's roughly going to be about an inch. The easiest way to tell is where this would naturally intersect, which will be right here. And I'm going to bend this as I'm bending this down. I'm also bending this parallel to the other piece. Doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we can always make adjustments. So that looks pretty good right there. I'm just going to turn this guy inward just a little bit with my hand and I'm happy with that. We're going to go ahead and do the exact same process with the other side. All right at this point what we want to do is we want to actually position this and get a nice dry fit make sure we're happy with everything and make any adjustments we need and then we're going to lightly stand it on as mains and make sure everything's symmetrical. Before we go any further take your razor blade and simply go down through and finish off this crease right here all the way to the wood and make sure that's nice and cleared out. And from this point on, you can actually do puncture the side, put one down in there, and we'll work on the second one. Just like that. And do the same with the other. Just because it looks complicated doesn't mean it is. Uh, one thing also I'd highly recommend is a lot of different wire stock, piano wire stock, spring wire, 
Um, it's quite oily and dirty. And this is obviously white paper foam board, uh, which oftentimes will transfer fingerprints right onto there. Doesn't hurt to have some alcohol or some Windex on hand and wipe off this wire before you start handling it and bending it. So if you notice your fingers are dirty, stop where you are, clean it before you touch your fuselage and get it all fingered up. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and sit down, sit it on its mains nice and delicately. And we're gonna go ahead and look at it to make sure the thing's sitting nice and level, that we're happy with the way it looks. 11 inches or 28 centimeters is our desired width and spread. And you can simply take this out and open it up a little bit more to get that. So I'm gonna flip it on its back. I'm gonna slide one at a time right out. I'm gonna lay it in its appropriate spot, right where it needs to be. And we're gonna do both halves of this together here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that nozzle right down in here. This is very common with the Mustang and also the Kraken. We're gonna fill these cavities up with hot glue. Just keep in mind it's going to squirt out when you push these in. We're going to follow the exact same process that we did before. First, leading edge, down in, trail edge, down in, and then the other side. You've got about 30 to 40 seconds to work with this. So you don't want to take your time, but you also you don't want to panic. And let's go right back and check and make sure we're symmetrical and even. You can go ahead and take one more bead of glue right over the top. and smear it down in with a piece of scrap foam. So at this point, we're ready to work on our top strut of the landing gear. And that top strut is actually gonna be what holds our wheel. Uh, so what we wanna do first is just like on the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and take our razor blade. And you can see that this slot is actually two lines. Reason being is both wires actually sit next to each other. One is just slightly forward to the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a nice little groove on both sides here. So this wire can go all the way down and in on both sides just like you see here. And at this point, we're gonna snake this landing gear wire down underneath here, so this is captive. And then we're gonna press this down and push it snugly against it. Now at this point, this could be off a little bit. All you need to simply do is rebend it to match that angle so it meets up at the very bottom here. But once you have this nice and flush against the bottom wood, and you got this at the very bottom of your landing gear, keep your finger there as a reference point. Pop it out and bend it parallel to this. So at this point straight down, I'm going to bend this straight up. And then we'll lay it down flat. And if we have any of this, we simply work it out with a little bit of a twist, just like that. Now when we go back to test fit it, what we should see is what looks like a very nice landing gear. We're gonna repeat the exact same process on the right-hand side now. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two landing gears, but we're gonna leave them inset here. And I'm gonna fill up the top groove here, just like we did on the bottom, with hot glue. And then we're gonna push both of them down and let them set. And if it's difficult to force everything down, you can use the extra little paint stick piece that you have to kind of give you a little bit of aid here. Just as we did on the bottom, we're going to go right back over the top with a nice heavy bead of glue and use a scrap piece of foam and force it down in that groove. There we go. And we're going to simply let this dry. Okay, now for the bottom here, there's a couple different ways you can do this. A lot of times with old timers, you could wrap and solder this, and that's simply by taking a copper strand and wrapping it around. And if you go back to one of our early solder videos, we actually demonstrated that technique on copper wire to get a whole bunch of wires for a quadcopter to join into one common one and get solder to flow in nicely. Simply called wrap and solder. Copper wire around, flux it, flow and solder. The bad thing is, is this landing gear then becomes so rigid that if you have a horrible hard landing, um, it most likely will take it out in the fuselage. What I'd much rather see is have it take it out in the landing gear and preserve your fuselage. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take two zip ties, one around the front, push as tight as it'll go, and then one around the back, as tight as it'll go. Now this is going to be right by the back of the wheel, so you're not going to really even see this part. Just like that. It doesn't look too pretty and it's not, but once again it's hidden by the wheel and you're not going to notice it. But what we're going to do before we cut this is I'm going to flow a little bit of hot glue in this lower joint. Right over top of the zip tie. And let it seep down in and get hard as a rock before I cut it. Now I'm then going to cut off the extra and repeat the exact same process on the other side, you'll be amazed in how strong it is, but the good thing is if it takes a real hard hit, there's a good likelihood it's gonna just break the zip tie 
and not your plane. All right, now the kit does include foam wheels. Uh, those foam wheels are definitely usable. They last a long time, especially if you use the pop rivet mod. Uh, go back in some previous videos. We have some quick tips around speed builds. But uh, these wheels are wonderful. They're very economical. And a matter of fact, hopefully in the near future, we'll be carrying them on our store. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put those on because I'm planning on you flying this plane quite a bit on some rough surface. But if you don't have wheels, there are some in the speed build kit. They're very easy to put on. And our power pot episode shows you exactly how to do it. I'm simply going to slide these in as far as I'll go and then put a nice little glue glob on the far side to lock it in. And as always, you can obviously use wheel collars and quote unquote do it the proper way. The glue globs work quite well actually. I'm going to let that dry when it's dry. I'm going to cut that. While that is drying though, I'm going to go ahead and put my attention towards the two top wing dowels. Now you're going to see two holes here right by the landing gear. I'm going to go ahead and slide this through and then out the other end. There we are. I'm going to give myself about a half an inch, a little over a centimeter on both sides. Just crack it loose and repeat the exact same process here. We have just enough. For this, I like going on either side so you don't end up missing the hole. There we are. And now the landing gear wire is probably securely fastened right off the excess. You can go very small like the original Scorch had where you can put very large tires. These are two and three quarters inches and I love them. So at this point we're putting on our wing. Um, now this is going to be flap around version. So on flap arounds, most of the time you go into channel one uh, or on spectrum actually channel aileron and then channel auxiliary uh, for this. And that's what we did just now. I'm going to go ahead and rubber band this on. And we're going to also be doing another supplemental video showing you more about mixing, how to do standalone flaps, how to uh, do mixes on your rudder and your ailerons. Um, and also how to put leading edge slats. But this is basically the beginner setup that you're gonna wanna be using with the exception of flapperons. The advanced slow fly setups are actually for more advanced pilots and once you're very comfortable with the envelope and the characteristics of this plane. At this point, it's time to put the battery in, check our throws, and we're out for a test flight. The transmitter's turned on. We're gonna go ahead and power it up. And there's plenty of room all the way up for 3,000. But my favorite battery to put on is a 2200. 1800 is also a nice size. And if you're doing a small, small motor just for super slow flight, you can put a 1300 all the way up in the nose and keep it very light. At this point, we're going to go two inches back from the leading edge. Right about where the main spar is. And if you guys know me, you know that I like just a touch of down nose. That way you know that you're definitely on the touch of the nose heavy side. This flies in a wide CG envelope, but this is a great way to test fly it. All right, let's check our throws, and we're out the door. Now I have here, included in the kit, a throw gauge, and we have high and low throws. The low throws is going to be if you're a beginner, and the high throws is going to be if you're in advanced setup. Or you can set your door rates for both, so once you get comfortable, and hopefully you will very quickly, you're good to go. All you simply need to do is uh, hold this onto the wing surface, Here's our high, and we'll go back and we'll make sure our low is where it needs to be as well. There we go. Okay. Now one last thing, I'm going to be covering this all over again in the supplemental video, but I want to let you know now, uh, these planes fly wonderful with a little bit of rudder mixed in. Now we did do differential, which does give you bank and yank abilities, but if you move just a little bit of rudder in, put your aileron, You'll have the same experience Josh Scott had when he was flying this, and it's a very docile, nice, easy turn. So I went ahead and programmed that. We're going to show you more in the supplemental. If you've never done it before, don't worry, we'll cover it. But at this point, we're ready to go test fly it. All right, friends, our uh, storage is now done. Our CG's checked. Our throws are calibrated. We're going to take care of our maiden. We don't need too much runway. We have this beautiful thing called the laparons. <laughs>
friends, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the flight test community. And also for all the wonderful folks that took time to fly this plane, give us their feedback. Also the beta testers that uh, checked it out, let us know what they did like, what they didn't like. This plane's great performance is a result directly of you. So I please encourage you to build it, share it with your friends, have group builds, make lots of memories. But most of all, give us your feedback and let us know what you want to see next. See you next time.